start seeing forklifts in various locations. Now that I just mentioned that, you watch. The next couple of weeks, you're going to see a forklift. I remember when Brett was talking about forklifts. You might even see one forklift rolling up to a fancy restaurant at a ballet on a Friday night. What do you think? You think I'm kidding? What do you think? Let's check it out. fighting for that Toyota forklift. Obviously, we had a little bit of fun with that. So, you know, I don't get the same confused look, though, with this group. When I'm in that elevator, I mentioned Toyota production system, they give me that confused look. I don't think so today, not, not in this room. In fact, I bet there's some of you that might know more about TPS than I do. So, I'm not here to teach you about TPS. You can even easily read many books that have been written about it, attend many seminars and conferences about TPS, but I'd like to share with you some of the principles of TPS to drive continuous improvement throughout our entire organization and give you a few examples. But before we get into the specific details, let's, let's, let me show you a photo. This photo is important to me. It's a photo of a paper towel on a bathroom floor. I'm not going to share the significance of this photo right, right yet. I just want you to remember it a little bit later in the presentation. It's an important visual to drive home a key message later in this presentation. Okay, let's get started. Today I'll share with you how we encourage our associates, our team members to stay motivated and engaged in continuous improvement in both our manufacturing and in our office environment. I'll share specific Kaizen examples from associates who are empowered to make their jobs and their processes and ultimately our products better every single day. And before we get into the details, for those of you who don't know a lot about TPS or might need a little refresher about the basic principles of the Toyota production system, let's watch a short three minute video to get up to speed. I promise it'll be much more entertaining than hearing me talk about it. Toyota production system is widely studied by business schools and manufacturing plants. But what exactly is the Toyota production system, and how do customers benefit? When manufacturing using the Toyota production system, Toyota only builds what is ordered. This ensures overhead costs are in check, and it provides stable pricing for the customer. Equipment orders are slotted into the production schedule based on the production forecast and slot availability. This ensures a level workflow through the factory and is a process called Heijunka. Toyota holds many of its suppliers to the Heijunka process as well to maintain levelized material flow and just-in-time component delivery. On the assembly line, parts and components are delivered directly to the associates. Toyota forklifts, tow trackers, and AGVs are used to deliver parts to the line following the assembly sequence, which is dictated by the daily production schedule. The just-in-time principle is critical because it allows associates to receive the right parts the moment they're needed, in the exact location they're needed, for the specific forklift they're assembling at that time. Assembly associates focus on standardization and specialization, which allows them to work on many different lines and produce many different products. The Toyota production system guarantees product quality by making each person in every process in our facility a quality inspector. So rather than having inspection at the final process to make sure the product is good and to our standards, we rely on each associate to be an inspector. So therefore, we have 900 inspectors on the shop floor that are trying to make sure that, that good quality is built into the product. In order to continuously improve the production quality and safety in the supply chain, regular meetings are held on the shop floor and the TPS culture requires a consistent presence of managers and other leaders in and around the assembly lines. To take consistent quality a step further, 
Associates perform quality checks on every component they touch before sending their work down the line. They mark each component using a colored marker. And if you look closely at any Toyota forklift, you'll see multiple marker dots on internal components. This indicates the component has passed through various quality checkpoints before reaching the customer. When the forklift is completely assembled, it goes through a final inspection. 100% of Toyota products are tested and inspected in order to guarantee the highest level of quality for Toyota forklift customers. So as you heard uh, Tom Lego say in the video, making things is about making people. And I think that's an important message that, that I wanted to share with you today. You know, from the beginning, we set a goal for every associate to understand that we value their ideas. We value their suggestions. And we want to help them make improvements to their process. It's simple. We want to make their jobs easier and their lives better. All right, so here are three main ingredients to create a culture of continuous improvements. We call them the three E's. Educate your associates on what is expected of them. Engage your associates in making changes. And empower your associates to make the changes. Some people have included enhance as a fourth E, but let's keep it simple today. We'll just focus on these three. So how do we educate new associates? Well, we start with an assimilation process that shares a little, but not too much, about our culture. We don't just bombard them with theory. We want them to see TPS in action. And then we assign a great deal of on-the-job training to, to each of the new associates. They also are assigned a leader. This person becomes a sensei, if you will, or, or a teacher to the apprentice or, or the new associate. Then how do we engage associates to embrace change and stay motivated, involved in continuous improvement? We show them our commitment to continuous improvement by practicing it every day. We engage our manufacturing associates in continuous improvements by asking them a simple question first thing in the morning. It's the first thing we ask them when we see them. How is your process? And if the associate has a problem or an idea, say on that one day, they simply note it on their clipboard and then the leader will come around to talk to them within an hour or two. Right that morning, we find out what's going on. So every morning, how is your process? You hear that all throughout, throughout our office. Now, if it's a small change, we empower our leaders and team members to go ahead and make the change. If they need assistance, we get engineering or manufacturing or maintenance involved. Either way, our goal is to analyze and complete the improvement in less than 25 days. That's our goal. How fast we respond is key. We don't want our associates to lose trust in our commitment to the process. But I think it's really important, even if you can't do it quickly, get some type of feedback to their idea. Otherwise, this may end up being your suggestion box to the beef of the, uh, of the employees, right? You don't want this to be a, to be a suggestion box in, in your office area or in your factory area. All right. Along these same lines, when we are making improvements to a particular area, we involve all associates who work there, all, everyone in that entire area. If people feel that you are driving change without their input, they will find a thousand reasons why something won't work. But when you involve them in the process and solicit their ideas, they are much more willing to work towards that improvement. Now, getting them involved also gives them an opportunity to participate in the cycle of process improvement so they can learn by doing. And you know the old saying about teaching a person to fish, right? The same is true here. If you improve a person's process, it will stay the same until you return to improve it again. But if you teach someone to improve the process, they can make the improvements every day. Now, you probably know that eliminating waste is a core principle of TPS. And TPS started, Aichi Ono identified seven categories of muda, or waste. More recently, we added the eighth muda, which is underutilization of employees and underutilization of their creative minds. We believe this is the worst waste of them all. And here's why. When you create a culture of continuous improvement, your associates become experts at identifying waste. You multiply the number of smart people 
looking for ways to improve, before you know it, you've got an army of people ready to identify and battle the seven other ways. This is the only Muda that can battle the other Mudas. Right? I, think, I think that's a very important takeaway. Now, eliminating ways doesn't mean this. You've probably seen this photo in some of your training classes, perhaps. Well, it could reduce some uh, wasted motion, I guess, uh, walking in the restroom, but it's kind of a fun, funny image when you talk about eliminating ways. Let me share now back to some examples that we have at our Toyota factory. Some two key examples from Toyota Associates to show how, how improvements can really make a difference. The first example is from our associate named Al. Al uses a laser to cut steel plates. His process wouldn't be too labor intensive if he only had one size plate to fit on his work table every single day. But because we have several different sizes of forklifts, some of them very small, some of them very big, we follow the just-in-time production model, along with that challenge of having a lot of different models, Al has many different size plates run through his process. So one day, he realized he was spending a lot of time and energy switching jigs and, and vices around every time he received a new size plate. So he recognized the sixth Muda, unnecessary motion. He started thinking about it. So let's hear Al talk about what happened next in his own words. Before, I used to have to take these and set them on two three by three tubings that run on the table right here and then I would have to take a hammer and pound them with holes like that. Now I don't have to do that with this jig. It automatically just sets them right in place. I'm ready to tap. Before I had to have these, I would take and put a pin right here in the holes to make sure that they stayed lined up all right. When I got done tapping them, I would always have to turn around and unload them from the back side, and it was really a lot of twisting and turning. I just thought there's got to be an easier way to do this than the way I'm doing it. So I knew the parts that I had, I, could, I knew there's 13 different parts that I can tap on this jig. Before, I had to either move everything around or pick up a big vise that's down here under the table and set it up to put my smaller parts in. Now I don't have to do that. I make a, I've got another part that I can set right here and put, put different parts in to tap them at the same time. It's probably saved me probably two hours of production a day on all the different parts. So I'm going to help my job as easy as I can, you know, and they let me do that. Uh, they tell us, they, they tell us that they want to do that, you know, and that's, that's what I do. That's what I do. I mean, like, Al, yeah, no, no hired actors at Toyota. We get the real thing. We just gave them a microphone and there weren't even any questions. Let's talk. And, yeah, he's a pretty impressive guy. I, I couldn't talk like that and, and work the drill press and everything all at the same time. Could, could you feel his, his engagement, though? And, and even if you didn't understand the whole details of the process, you could truly feel he was engaged. Um, and, and we encourage Al to come up with these ideas. It's not magic. It's not rocket science. It's just something that we just need to practice every single day. And you can see he followed the, the three E's of, of what I already mentioned. He was